Welcome back, Mr. Goodberry. The first Star Logistics Studio is fully equipped and ready to record. Welcome to episode 52 of Bengals on the Brain, presented by First Star Logistics. I'm your host, Joe Goodberry, and we're going to keep rolling today with the draft process, looking at tape of Jerzon Newton, defensive tackle out of Illinois, someone that I was interested in by the highlights I saw come across my timeline on Twitter. And then when I watched three games, I was like, I didn't even take three games, to be honest. First game we're going to start with, I was like, whoa, yeah, I'm in. Uh, but then once I got the three games, I was like, yes. And I don't want to give it away too much. But we're going to start with the news, a little bit of news first, and it's quick. Brian Callahan, the offense coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, is interviewing for his second time. So I believe they were virtual first time. Now it's second interviews. Usually a big sign that this team would be interested in hiring you as their next head coach. He has the Titans on Monday. So by the time you've seen this, it may potentially be announced already. Uh, but it, what this means is we're probably looking at a new offensive coordinator next year. Then we have the Panthers on Tuesday, and I believe the Falcons Wednesday for Brian Callahan. Very busy, lots of interest around the league. If you're one of the guys that are like, hey, this offense sucks. Well, <laughs> I think others around the league disagree, as Dan Pitcher, the quarterback's coach, is also a hot name for offensive coordinator openings around the league. He has interviewed with the New Orleans Saints already. He has this, again, you're going to see this on Tuesday, has an interview with the Patriots today. So depending on what time it is, it's probably already reported. And then the Las Vegas Raiders have put in a request to interview him as well. There's been other team sniffing in that er around Dan Pitcher also. The connection there is that you kind of have to make a decision if you're the Bengals of, hey, Brian, are you getting the job? And can we now keep Dan Pitcher as our offensive coordinator. I believe the Bengals are probably, I Bengals are option number one for him uh, if everything goes right. And we'll see what the Bengals offer. We'll see what, what happens. We'll see how that changes everything. And we will talk about overall the changes and how that will affect things. I'm sure someone like Dave Lapham will have a Dan Pitcher interview on the First Star Media channel. So make sure you click the uh, subscribe button. So and I'm not saying he will, but he's interviewed Pitch before, so I imagine he will again if that move happened. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to dive into the Jerzon Newton film, and then I've got some AFC Divisional Round thoughts about how some of those games applied to the Bengals. It makes me think about some of our players maybe a little bit differently after watching specifically the Bills struggling in a certain aspect. Maybe go, hmm, maybe we should keep this guy. But first, Johnny Newton, that'll help us pronounce his name, and the film right now. Johnny Newton, number four here, defensive tackle. I'll have him circled for you so you can see this is versus Penn State, first game. And you're going to see a lot of this just to start. Uh, not that it's a huge play, but you're going to see a swim move right off the bat. And the lineman ends up on the ground. You're going to see in this game and in the next game I'll show you too, he puts his opponent on the ground as much as any defensive tackle I have ever watched. He is super strong with agility, with acceleration, with an array of moves, and he gets to the quarterback. So I'll let it roll now. Just little things like that, even though it doesn't affect the play, he's clearly beating his man. They're going to leave him unblocked here and read him, and he does a good job closing on the running back, making a tackle. Watch the penetration he gets and push he gets here, and then gets in and rolls into the legs of the running back, but taking on that guard, you know, head on and blowing him back and then allowing everyone else to come in behind you. If you notice right here too on this play, watch this as he lines up, not this one, the next one here, I'm going to pause it. But you see as he lines up, he's going to say right away, all right, motion here. And he's going to slide out one technique outside of the tackle and he's going to wave to his nose tackle or maybe the linebackers, I'm not sure, but he's going to tell him, hey, that's coming this way. And he's correct. And you're going to see this a few times, too. And watch him get in there. Again, penetration, bull rush, strength, upfield penetration, leverage inside, head inside, helps make the tackle. And that was on, I believe they are going for it on fourth and goal. Double two-hand swipe, swim to the outside, set him up, 
It's like a, it's cross shot and uh, almost gets the quarterback there. He's a little bit on the outside, so understandably why you can't get to him. But again, we got different moves. Watch him lock him out here. Lock him out, locate the ball, swim back inside, help make the tackle. So now that's versus the, the he's gone against the, the left tackle and the right guard, beating both of them soundly and with strength and with different moves. So we're going to see it as he moves down the line. Again, look at him hold at the point of attack here. You're not going to see him take on double teams too much. But what you're going to see is him hold at the point of attack here. Okay, so they're clearly running the ball towards him. He's got his eyes on the outside. He's going to see that right hand underneath. Watch him lock out with that hand right there. I mean, that that ta that guard is getting no push on him at all at the point of attack where the run is going. And Newton still got his eyes on the running back, still in position to make a play. And then ends up moving back inside, throwing his guy down. His teammates make the tackle. Again, a nice, that's like two Broncos going at it, two Bulls going at it. Just a stalemate. And then Newton's going to run with the play. You're going to see a lot of hustle plays out of him on the tape. He's getting help there with the running back, still pressures the quarterback, still runs with it, still helps make the tackle. And now, again, I if you don't, if you haven't watched a lot of this, these aren't just highlights. I didn't just clip the highlights. I clipped the plays where I felt they were evaluation. They were uh, they had enough meat on them to say, all right, this is worth something negative and positive into his, into put into his profile. And I think this may be the first one we get where it's a negative. He gets stood up on a short yarded situation. You see their heads collide. He pops up out of it. Leverage, playing too high. You're going to get walked back on those. I think he does play high sometimes, but I don't. overall, I don't think it's a major issue. I got another holding your ground type play. Don't allow them to get to the outside of you. He's going to throw down his guy here as the run goes to the opposite side. Oh. We got a nice, clean win. Knock that outside hand, swim over, and now collapse on the quarterback. Good hit on the QB, too. Just hitting them high with your hands. Power now. Look how he, he kind of gives them a hezzy step and then goes inside with the power, hands inside, walking them backwards and gets to the quarterback. Hit on the quarterback's arm. Ball sails away. He's looking to the sideline for guidance, then turns and goes, oh, the play has started. And it does not affect him. <laughs> he still holds his guy up. Now that run goes for, you know, five, six or something. But I do like the awareness there as he's looking to the side, looking for some adjustments from the coaching staff. And then the play starts and he can snap right back into it and get in. We got a stunt, a loop all the way around here. And while he does really good to get around, I, you do see a lot of pebbles fly out of his feet here. One of the things of why guys sometimes are high pressure guys, but don't get a lot of sacks. That last phase is closing on the quarterback, your closing speed, your ability to cut a corner. If you have to work through some contact and, and, and through an offensive lineman and get to the QB, you see him slide and slip here. Could be a one-time thing. Something to note as we watch the rest of the film. Still a really good athletic play. Saw that a lot of Kalaji Kansi last year out of pit. With where they would loop him around multiple gaps. Here he is going around the outside edge and beats the right tackle this time. I want to go back and we can watch that again. Again, he's going to come around the right tackle. So we, we've seen him beat the left tackle, left guard, right guard, and now the right tackle. On both of these, you're going to see him end up going. And uh, He lined up outside this gap. He's going to end up coming all the way across, going between center and guard. Fight through contact there, get in the quarterback's face, force an errant throw. This time he's going to loop all the way around, get off the center, and then close on that quarterback. So they're just causing two incomplete passes due to pressure and being able to not just bull rush up your gap. And while this is a, a different conversation, but sometimes you have a guy that is a good pass rusher but not a great athlete. Let's say a DJ Reader. He had a very good pass rushing year. But you're not going to do a lot of those two things that you just saw with him because he's not the type of sideline to sideline athlete where you can move him up and down the, the defensive line and create havoc. And really, B.J. Hill isn't either. So this Newton gives you something that the other guys definitely don't. 
Again, so the play's going to the right here, and he's all the way. I mean, he's multiple gaps over, scrapes across, lays a monster hit on that running back. Batted pass, eyes, awareness, vision on the play. He's more at the nose spot here on the center, walks the center back. The run goes for the touchdown. This isn't a completely a negative on him. You, if you look here, they are, they've are they only got three guys on this side with three blockers. Even the guard's going to come over. It's going to be four blockers. The linebacker never gets over. They're going to leave the edge guy out here. Oh, no, they're reading the D tackle on this one. So they're taking him off the play. This guy's going to climb and get the linebacker. So it's really not Newton's fault. I liked the penetration on the center. But there is a moment there where if, if you saw him peek inside really quickly, it's right about just a frame after this. Right there, he peeks inside, and the run goes outside. So something to be aware of. This is largely a very impressive game for Newton. Just a couple plays to be aware of. Nice. Uh, both guys there got, got good push on each other, and he ends up staying on his feet, though. It's one of the things I really like about Newton is he almost rarely ever hits the ground. Nice little swim inside. Get your eyes on the running back. Force him to bounce outside where your linebacker can help clean it up. Again, holds his lineman up, locates the ball carrier, makes a move to discard the lineman and make a play. High end play. Multiple in one game. Get into the passing lane. Bat it down. Very, very disruptive game for Newton versus Penn State. Next game I got queued up for you guys is Jerzon Newton versus Wisconsin. And this one was another excellent game. He's got a lot of excellent games, but both Wisconsin games 2022 and 2023 were standouts, in my opinion. We're going with 2023 here to wrap up today's show. And let's roll it. Number four, inside. Again, tossing his man, right? The run's going away from you. You're flowing with it. Get your arm up underneath that on that shoulder or in that armpit and just launch the guy, fill the gap, make the tackle right off the bat. I believe that's the first play of the game. And this is the first third down. I mean, if I can go back for a second here, because I love going back here. But when you can go from this side, and he's all the way, if anything, he's shaded outside this tackle. You're going to attack the upfield, get this guy to turn a little bit, and then jump back all the way to the other gap. Oh, yeah. And you just get a hand on the quarterback. Just force a quick pass. It's not a sack, right? That is turning into pressure. That's flashing in front of the quarterback and forcing, again, same thing, flashing in front of him and forcing a quick pass or movement at the snap. Watch this. Watch this swim move. Knock away the outside hand. Swim over. And, man, you're lucky they had some help over there on Jerzon Newton. All right, so he's in a stalemate here. Didn't really win, but man, you know where the running running back is. This time the quarterback. You know where the ball carrier is. You get to the inside, punch it out, force that fumble. Go ahead and celebrate number four. You cause the turnover for your team. On the left side versus the left, the right tackle this time. Watch this. Whoop. I mean, that is snap quickness. And again, he's on top of the running back there. He's only ever on the ground when he's making a tackle. But his opponent ends up on the ground often. Look at that. A little bit of power now. Let's move over to the left side. Man, that's a grown man there, number four. He's NFL ready strength-wise. I think moves-wise and quickness, honestly. He's got all of that. I mean, he's getting off the line here so fast, they can't even trap block and get a guy over. And he's already on the back of the quarterback, forcing a, a quick throw. Again. He's going to beat this guy in very tight quarters here. You're going to have to get skinny between the tackles. It has to happen. Beat that outside arm. Rip. Oh, he gets pulled inside just a little bit. You see he's upset after this. Like, man, I missed it. I messed up there. But what a clean win. Let's throw your guy down again as the run's going on the opposite side. I mean, that's just, he is strong. Put him over the nose here, over the center. Go all the way back around to the right side here. Get that arm off you. Close on the quarterback. We talked about in the last game, we want to see him close more and be able to cut that corner and, and accelerate into the, the quarterback. And boy, did he do it right 
there. Let's go back and enjoy this one again as he's at the nose tackle spot. And we're going to go all the way back through the outside of the right guard. You got to have athleticism to do this. Here he goes. And then you've got to have a good enough move. Get that outside arm down or away from you. Then rip. Have enough strength. Have enough agility and power in the lower half to cut that corner, cut that arc, and then explode. You got to have the athleticism. He's got the total package on that play. Taking on a double team there, getting washed out, washed back a little bit, but man, sideline to sideline, range and a mean tackle by Drazon Newton. You're going to see him take on the double. Doesn't good enough job because his linebacker still gets to the running back, and then he's the one to get to the sideline and clean it up. Woo! Oh, see, like little plays like that doesn't really affect the play, but he slow plays it over the right guard and then beats him. I mean, like the hand usage here is clean. Ooh. This nice little that's the sound it makes. Put him back over the other side now. He's getting double teamed. Swim moving one guy, holding up the other guy. Oh, oh, the swim is nasty. And then you got to have the power to get through it, get skinny, get athletic, and then demolish the QB. Man. Can I go back? Let's should we enjoy that one a little bit more? Just one more time here. What a high quality win versus usually a school that has good offensive linemen, Penn State and Wisconsin, right? Oh, yeah. And then cut the corner, turn and get to the quarterback. Hit him high, but not to where it's a penalty because we'll get to that. He does have a penalty later. Uh, spoiler alert. But I always thought, remember the Geno Atkins on Deshaun Watson hit where he just hits him high in the shoulder with your arms. You don't got to fall on the guy and get a 15-yard penalty. Just, it's a quarterback, right? For most of these guys, you can just shove them high, and they'll fall over. Looping all the way to the outside, and man, he almost gets there. <laughs> the ball gets gets batted by the front side there. Newton picks it up, so good at ball awareness. But, and looping him from the outside, and he can almost get home. Split two guys, force the quarterback to move, throw a deep ball that goes out of bounds. I'm going to go back to that one as well. Got an array of moves. He can win. His moves land. They're clean. They're efficient. Outside now again. Oh! <laughs> yeah, so this gets penalized. But, oh my, I do not care. The win is so clean. Watch him set it up. Has he? Oh, knock that arm down. Rip or swim over. Knock it down and then cut that corner. Cut that corner when the area is so tight. This is something that people don't, I think, respect enough. When you get here... And a lot of times the tackle and the guard are trying to pinch you together. At least the guard's going to want to pinch you into that tackle. And a lot of guys that are lesser athletes can't get through it. You can't get high and skinny, kind of running back getting through the hole, right? Same thing. You got to get skinny through the hole, get over the top, and then cut this corner flatten to the quarterback. Let's watch him do it. Good. God, that's a crushing blow. What a high-end play. He knows it. He knows he hit him way too hard and in the head. So that was some of the tape on Johnny Newton. And to be honest, a lot of his games look just like that. He'll be 21 at draft time, 21.7 to be exact. So he's young enough. I expect him to test like a high-end athlete. Again, we'll update this at the Combine if he doesn't, because that will clearly affect his draft stock. He's looking like a top 15 to 25 pick. So that should be right in the range of 18 where the Bengals select. I've seen some mock drafts where he is still there uh, after they pick. I've seen some where he's gone in the top 10. So we're still figuring out where Newton's range is going to be. But at this point, if you're asking me, would I take him at 18? Resoundingly, yes. I would confidently take Newton based off the tape. Uh, we'll see on the, the athleticism testing. I expect it to be good, so like I feel confident in that. And then the, the other part is production. I posted a video and talked a little bit about Newton on Twitter, at Joe Goodbury, if you don't follow me. And we had a comment of um, he hasn't had the production and that he never had 10 sacks and you know things like that, that production matters. And counting numbers matter less than market share numbers so this is something if you're new to the draft process and when i talk about production this guy has production this guy doesn't have production there's a couple of things we look at age adjusted production so the younger you are with high-end production great we want that that 
all of these point to success in the NFL level. So we want to look at it if it didn't. All of these point to success, so we're going to use them. Age-adjusted production. Young, produced, great. Jamar Chase at 19 going off in the SEC. That's great. In the SEC also. So strength of schedule, adjusted production. Again, that helps. So if you play against good teams and you take care of business against those teams and have big games against those good opponents, that helps your production score. The other part is instead of uh, just saying, well, this guy had 10 sacks and this guy had six, well, one team may be better defensively completely and maybe have a better scheme that allows these guys to rush the passer more often. So your 10 sacks, if your whole defense has 60 sacks, your 10 sacks are valuable, but it's one sixth of the, of the entire total. If the other guy has six sacks and the entire team only had 24 sacks, well, I mean, that guy is getting more production for his team than the other guy, if that makes sense. So we use a market share adjusted production. When you look at Johnny Newton in terms of solo tackle market share, he's in the 92nd percentile. When you use sack market share, he's in the 98th percentile. So yes, he's never had 10 sacks, but for his defense at his age, adjusting all of that, 98th percentile. Tackle for loss score, 93rd percentile. Overall pass score, 94.4 percentile for production. This puts Newton's production profile in, in not just all pro, but potentially Hall of Fame type of outlook and i know that sounds crazy but this is you have to hit these markers if you're wanting to draft an all pro player newton hits it and then if you like that film another check i expect him to test like an elite athlete another check that's a guy that goes top 10 so Clyde jacancy was supposed to go top 10 last year as well he didn't he had a very very outstanding rookie year and in the playoffs i'll take newton at 18 but moving on talking about the playoffs Something I noticed that maybe changed my perspective, but also brought me back. So first, what changed my perspective? Watching the Texans versus Ravens, seeing the Ravens front and that defense be as fast and as physical as they are, it is extremely hard to run against them when you're going sideline to sideline. You better have one of two things. A running back with high-end speed to beat these fast linebackers, or a power bruising north south running back. Joe Mixon and Samaj P. Ryan have had good solid days against this Ravens front because of that. Because they get north south, they take their four yards and they run head first as hard as possible for that four yards. Watching Devin Singletary, a guy I like that I think would be a good complimentary piece in the Bengals offense, to be honest. Small, not very fast. He's elusive. He's smart. He's got great vision. He can catch. He can block. Uh, but against the Ravens, whoo, man, it was tough for him. It was it was tough sliding all day. And it made me like, yeah, Mixon is, is really good for that power stuff. Uh, Chase Brown has the speed. Now, again, I've said I don't expect Mixon to be here. But when, while looking at the next running back and trying to win this division first and foremost, we probably need to get a power guy in here uh, for those games. The other part is the Texans. Losing Tank Dell and only having Nico Collins, it, re it really was highlighted that they didn't have enough weapons. Now, Dalton Schultz made a lot of big plays, and I, it made me go, need that tight end still. Uh, but not having that wide receiver too really affected their passing game big time. And then the Bills versus Chiefs. The Bills lost Gabe Davis a few weeks ago to a knee injury, and there was three deep balls, one to Stephon Diggs, two to Trent Sherfield, I think it was, and he couldn't come down. They, they were beautiful balls by by Josh Allen and not having that receiver too and getting no explosive plays through the air killed them ultimately. Uh, and there was other mistakes, of course, but like from a team building aspect, from taking that a roster and saying, how can I improve upon it? The bills are going to be drafting a first round receiver. Like how can they not? And here we are. And how's the supply of the Bengals? Well, you have Jamar chase. You're expecting to extend him. We're talking about tight ends. We're talking about running backs and O-line and D-line, of course. But T. Higgins, foregone conclusion that they will tag him and keep him for one year. But man, I still value that wide receiver two spot. When defenses are trying to take away that number one and you need to pivot in the playoffs to your secondary players, you're playing against the best teams that are going to take away your best options. 
to go to the next guys. And we've had this issue before against the Chiefs. Like last year when Tyler Boyd went down and it was, and the Chiefs were like, all right, we're going to double Chase and Higgins. Can you beat us with Trent Irwin? Can you beat us with Hayden Hurst? And this year it was Tanner Hudson, right? Can you beat us with Samaj P. Ryan and Joe Mixon out of the backfield? And the Bengals couldn't. They weren't dynamic enough at the secondary players, the next level players. And I think that's really where the Bengals need to get better, and especially this year. So even keeping Higgins this year, if you're going to get to a situation where they're taking away your two guys, what are you at slot receiver? What are you at tight end? What are you at a passing game running back? And the Bengals were really, really not effective there this year. And I think it's a big area for them to jump and get better. So while we're going to talk about O-line, D-line, and clearly we did in this video, they need defensive tackle help. They need O-line help. I want to secure those trenches. Don't get me wrong. Watching the playoffs made me realize, like, you need these weapons. You're, they're going to take away your best players. What do the next guys do? And that includes T. Higgins as the number two. So this is Bengals on the Brain. I'm Joe Goodbury. Show is brought to you by First Star Logistics. Thank you for watching, and we will more than likely stay defensive tackle. Got another guy that's super young, projected to be a first-round pick right in the Bengals' range at number 18. That'll be Friday's show. Until next time, who Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.